Welcome to Eureka. The program is dedicated to scientists of the country, those scientists who have contributed significantly. Scientists who have worked tirelessly to achieve, achieve the goal of expanding horizons of science. Today, we have Dr. Girish Sahani with us, who is director of IMTECH. Institute of Microbial Technology. Girish Sani Saab, uh, tell us what is this institute all about that you are heading? The Institute of Microbial Technology or IMTECH is a constituent of the CSIR. The Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. Research. Which is dedicated to the promotion of science and the translation of science for societal good for benefit to mankind. It is a very important chain of laboratories publicly supported which of which IMTEC is a very recent addition. Yeah, I still remember my grandmother telling me that uh, uh, when I asked the question that uh, these small insects how do they come about, where did they come about from. And she explained to me that God uh, creates them out of filth and dirt. This is about 60 years back in India. But science had expanded in Europe and we knew that there is a life cycle of these microbes. Uh, today, when we look at these microbes, what kind of role they play in ecosystem? in human life and are they friendly to us or are they enemies of human life? Yeah, very interesting because the general perception in the public is that most of the microbes are probably dangerous. This stems partly from the knowledge that most disease organisms or many diseases are caused by microorganisms which are essentially invisible but which can infect <clears throat> people from one individual to another, etc., etc. But that is only they a very contagious. small. That there is contagious, yeah. absolutely. But this is only one small part of the drama that the microbial world presents yes. before us. Yes. Okay. You know, essentially, the microbes are nature's great friends and great relentless workers. They are invisible, but that does not take away or diminish their role in life you know, right from the soil to the heights of our atmosphere, the microorganisms are all prevailing. Whenever life dies in one form or another, you know, an organism dies, a body decomposes, that whole cycle of taking the elements back into nature is actually carried out by microorganisms. So this is a very essential part of the drama of life, the wheel of life. Now, in the last 150, 200 years, microbiology as a discipline has gained great roots. It is a very well developed science, starting from the days of Pasteur, Leeuwenhoek, etc. You know, when scientists discovered microorganisms because they could invent microscope, mm. they saw that there is a whole great universe of microorganisms. Which we hadn't seen before the uh, invention of uh, microscope. Ma ma microscope. Right. You know, but even before the. That the small lens opened up gate towards. Absolutely. A huge Just as the telescope cosmos. opened up the yes. astronomical world, yeah. the microscope, which is more inward looking, opened up the universe of the microbes. And microbes have been recognized to be very friendly, not because they were discovered later, but because, you know, early on people realized that most fermentative processes, wine making, beer making, cheese making, and of course in the Indian and Asian cuisine, a lot of fermentation is a part of component of the, of, the, of the culinary arts and sciences. Microbes are at, at the root of the transformations that are so important for us. Then later on, people discovered that fermentation could be harnessed as a great scientific tool to produce antibiotics, for instance, you know, which are life savers. After yes. all, the discovery of antibiotics, which is a fortuitous, a, a serendipitous discovery in the 40s or the early 30s right. by Fleming led to so much <clears throat> benefits to mankind. But then again, this is another very interesting aspect of the complexity of the microbial world 
that the same antibiotics which were life giving today are we are at the threshold of a, of a phase where there are a lot of organisms which are resistant to the same microorganisms. Absolutely. Again, we have to go back to the microbial world to search for new antibiotics. Absolutely. So, you know, uh, uh, there is another feature of the microbial world which deserves special mention, which is that the gene pool, the diversity of the genetic repertoire, if you will, associated with microbes. So, it is a great benediction to scientific uh, endeavor that the, micro or mic the microbial world is available to tap various advantageous things varying from you know, new antibiotics to new medicines to harnessing microorganisms for the production of recombinant, for example, drugs, etc. Drugs, etc. Yes. Uh, that brings me to another question that do you think that the microbial world that we are looking at is dynamic, number one, and therefore you require huge installation like CSIR investing into a large uh, building, a large um, institute just for looking at these microbes. Is it worth it? Is it required? Because uh, a common man in India would say, why are you wasting so much of money on microbes? You, you want to investigate. So, uh, uh, why do you waste so much of money on this? Uh, is it required that we have great institutions built only to look at these problems. Yeah, just as we talked about, you know, the importance of microorganisms, which makes it very self-evident that <clears throat> the microbial world is very important for multifarious reasons. You can't survive without. You can't survive. You have to see, you have to defend against dangerous microorganisms. Right. You have to utilize and befriend potentially useful microorganisms. Right. You have to have systems in place where once you systematically search for new microorganisms with great benefit, you want to grow them in large quantities, you want to harness their, their, their beneficial molecules for instance, antibiotics, etc. So, the microbial world is certainly very important from the point of view of disease and there are lots and lots of hospitals and uh, medicine oriented R&D institutions which carry on work on. the. <coughs> I still remember 95, 96 when there was a scare that there is going to be plague in the country and there was plague in the country. So, without this kind of knowledge, can we fight uh, uh, contagious diseases like plague? A absolutely not, because the synergy that you need between the microbiologist, the fundamental science associated with microbiology, the application oriented translation of these insights yes. and the transition from the laboratory to the bench side, to the bedside of the of the uh, patient via the medically oriented professionals is an extremely important uh, activity. You were also mentioning somewhere in your talk that these microbes have novel gene pool. Yes. So, uh, uh, yeah. studying gene yes. is an extremely important thing. But how do you relate it to? Okay, that? so you see. <coughs> Uh, let me go back to the primary observation that antibiotics, which are life savers, sprang essentially from, from, from their discovery from the microorganisms. Now, we are always looking for new microorganisms. We are always looking for, I mean mankind is yeah. always seeking to find new antibiotics because more and more microbes are becoming resistant. The microbial world is also a great source of entities called enzymes therapeutic peptides, therapeutic proteins, in other words, various yeah. types of drugs, not only antibiotics, but various, various kinds of other beneficial activities. Right. Now, all these bioactivities actually arise because of the genes in the microorganisms. So, the more new genes you discover, the more capability you assume of manipulating microorganisms right. for advantage. So, therefore, you see a very important thing, uh, observation that if you take microorganisms from the environment, say the soil or water bodies, mm. only a very few, only one or two percent of these microorganisms are actually living. The rest of the microorganisms, the 99 percent portion of the microorganisms in these environmental niches are actually not easily culturable. 
Oh, they are dead. They are not actually dead, but they are not actively growing. Right. They are cryptically growing, and we do not have necessarily the means to means grow them to fulminantly. Grow them. So one approach is to search for new genes, isolate those genes, put them into other organisms which grow well, and exploit them. So therefore, asking questions and searching for answers is what science is all about. Uh, I have to take a break, but we'll continue this very interesting conversation. Uh, don't go anywhere. We are at Eureka. Dr. Sani is with us. We'll come back soon. Welcome back to Eureka. Uh, Dr. Sahani, we were at, uh, at a very uh, uh, interesting juncture when we went for this uh, break. So, you were saying that your life begins at home, which is motivated towards science. You are shaped by the school, then you come to the best institutions of the country and then you go to best institutions. Had you not gone abroad, would you be different? Yes, in some ways, in some ways because <clears throat> the all fields require a certain level of training and exposure to the craft of the, of the science if you will, the philosophy of the, of the discipline. But also, you know, the best of both worlds. In India, we have great rigor. Science knows no boundaries. Yes, knows no boundaries. You have to work Absolutely. with the best. But in the West, yeah. the complementation of Indian rigor with that philosophical approach to doing science, mm -hmm. which you sometimes see in the West in very pronounced and appreciable way, that synergy I could tap, like many others, of course. When you came back to India, did you have some kind of fear that whether you will get a job here or not, whether you will uh, be able to adjust within the country? Only for a very brief period of time before I got a job. It was a matter of a couple of months. Uh, uh, some circumstances kind of induced but me But a to lot come. of people say that the culture in abroad, yes. uh, in the laboratories, outside, and culture in India is very different and they, they are scared of coming back to India. What would you I say? actually did not encounter that. In fact, I either… The culture of science is same is, anywhere in the world. It is the same and in India, in some of the best places, the national labs, the universities and of course, the, it depends, it varies from lab to lab, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> would you say MTech is uh, one of the… Certainly, certainly. …best yes, labs absolutely. in the world? Yes, certainly. That is what our students say when they when they leave Imtech and go abroad and they come back and say that the that the kind of facilities, the atmosphere, yeah, the stimulus they get in Imtech, for instance, as a CSR lab, is no less than any place in the world. So we were fortunate to have an atmosphere where questioning, dissent, argumentation, etc., is the norm. It's not all yes man shape all the time. We were encouraged in Imtech, and I still do as the director, youngsters as well as everybody to be very open about issues and discuss them threadbare. Once a decision is taken, therefore it becomes much easier for people to actually support it and everybody becomes a stakeholder. Anyway, coming back to your original question, right. early on I discovered that if we can translate some of the science that we will begin to do, it will be very satisfactory. I was fortunate in getting, collecting a group of young people who gave whole, wholeheartedly to this endeavor. And we started out by trying by, on, a, on a project which, would, which aimed at producing the first, first clot buster in this country. You know, what is it? Ah, this, <laughs> is, this is something. Tell that, us about yes. this clot buster. Yes. You see, when people undergo heart attacks, 50% of the heart attacks occur because there is a clot within the uh, blood vessels of the heart. Once the clot interrupts the blood flow to the heart muscle, there is the classical symptom of a heart attack, which is essentially uh, pain, etc. It also happens in brain? It can, the same thing can also happen in the brain, happen. which is called a stroke. Yeah. Again, one of the principal methods by which you, which you address this problem, either in the brain or in the heart, is by giving clot busters. Clot busters are like drain cleaners which mm. will dissolve the blood clot and restore blood supply. Within minutes of giving, the blood supply is restored. However, the problem is twofold at least. One, many of these clot busters 
are not available in the country or they were not available when I started out mm. in Imtech when we started this project. So it was a very ambitious project that we will produce the it's first cloud buster like in the country. If I want to understand it in a very simple language, it is like when you are drain yeah. in the house yeah. get clogs, yes. you put some chemical into it yes. which dissolves yes. whatever is uh, the obstruction right. and then the drain starts working. Then once it starts again. working, then you can you have the leisure of changing the drain etc. So when people get a heart attack, the first SOS treatment is a clot buster. Right. Then later on, if once they are wheeled into a hospital, they can undergo angioplasty or a stenting etc. Right. Which is much more expensive. And in 1991-92 when we started out, these treatments were not easily available. Right. Neither the clot buster nor the angioplasty. Now there are millions and millions of people in developing countries who do not have access to a cath lab where you can, you can do the surgical intervention to treat the blockage right. etc. And it is very expensive also. So the availability of affordable clot buster is a national priority. Now, 1992-93-94, the time in which we started these projects with the active help of CSR as well as the DBT, Department of Biotechnology. Department of Biotechnology, these for them also this absolutely. project was extremely and, important. And they supported it wholeheartedly and there is a great debt of gratitude that I owe and uh, the, my whole group owes not only to CSR but also through DBT. Now, when the project started, we wanted to produce a process by which a clot buster could be made cheaply and effectively. And it took us about four or five years to get a process that was smart, efficient, not very complicated and it could be transmitted to industry without any problems. So in 1999, this process to produce natural streptokinase for the first time in the country was transferred to Cadilla Pharma Limited, Ahmedabad. And this is a very smart company, very R&D oriented company. They imbibed the technology. And within one, one and a half years of absorption of the technology, launched the product in the market. That was India's first clot buster that is known as STPAs. Now, the, the clot busters that were completely imported till that time, their price from several thousand rupees fell to almost one third. One, third one to almost price. one third, first half, then one third. Then in another few years, we could develop the recombinant version of streptokinase whose technology we gave to a company in, in Chennai called Shasun Drugs Limited. Mm -hmm. This company, because this product was recombinant, they took a few more years to get the regulatory approval including human clinical trials and the product was launched in 2009. So the first product, natural streptokinase, first clot buster of the country was launched in 2002. It continues to sell well in the markets mm -hmm. and then recombinant streptokinase once it was launched by in 2009. These two products occupy nearly 50% of the clot buster market in the country. We will come back to this. I have to take a break, but we will continue on the same subject. Do not go anywhere. Welcome back to Eureka. Today, we have a fascinating scientist, Dr. Grish Sahani, director of IMTEC, and we were discussing that how one of the institutes of Council of Scientific in Industrial Research has contributed to bringing down the prices of a very essential drug uh, that was required within the country and we were unable to get it from outside at a cheaper rate. The process that was developed by IMTEC was a great contribution to Indian drug industry. So, what are the advantages of having first rate cutting edge technology and science institutes within the country. See the game of technology is a continuum. It starts from beginning to do small new things and maturing by virtue of the knowledge base that you get, the experience that you get, the confidence that you get onto bold and world class technologies. Look at the Japanese, they started out by copying technologies. Look at the Koreans, now Absolutely. they are world class. So this streptokinase story, if you will, yes. in Imtech holds a very interesting paradigm, which is we started out by trying to produce and succeeding in doing so, the first Indian clot buster technology. Was the process that you developed 
Yes. Different from what was being done in. Oh, in yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That is that uh, is the key. Would you like to tell? Something yeah, the about process is is faster. It was modern. See, streptokinase was introduced in the Western markets in the 70s. Right. So there were some multinationals who were producing streptokinase. Then came the recombinant DNA revolution. Right. Another clot buster entered the world markets, which is called tissue plasminogen activator. Okay. But the tissue plasminogen activator, by virtue of the fact that it is a smarter, better version of a clot buster. Right. It is also based upon technology that is intrinsically more expensive, mm -hmm. cost approximately 10 times more than streptokinase. So we started out by making streptokinase, which is effective, right. affordable. We made the technology affordable. We commercialized it with the help of our partners. Lacks of people in the country have benefited or continue to benefit. One estimate that CSR has carried out recently estimates that approximately 20,000 crore rupees value of societal benefit has accrued because of these two technologies, natural streptokinase and recombinant streptokinase. But very interestingly, this whole experience and the scientific questions that we could address as part of our, our scientific studies hmm. led us to make a smarter streptokinase. We, Which was much cheaper. No, the these process, two were cheaper right. process wise, right. but we then went on to the third generation streptokinase. These are first generation right. is natural streptokinase, second generation recombinant streptokinase. But if we hadn't started in the first generation, we would never. We probably wouldn't have. Wouldn't have been. We able could to have, have, but you see, when you go into the depths of a problem, you start by trying to replicate technology, make it better. You start asking fundamental questions, and then you get insight to get an improved version. This is a very, very standard right. way of doing science and technology. So when we started looking at the fundamental questions associated with the mechanisms by which streptokinase works in the human body, we discovered that we could tweak the molecule and make it into a smarter molecule. What we essentially did therefore in the third generation streptokinase or clot buster was to introduce the property of specificity. If you, if you take normal streptokinase, it will dissolve the clot, but it also increases the risk of bleeding within the body. Okay. We then made a third generation streptokinase. Let me let me understand yes. this process. Yes. When you thin down a clot and yes. a blood clot yes. we are talking about, yes. then the other part of the blood that yes. is circulating in your body also thins down. That's right. Right. Potentially. Potentially yes. it, it, it thins down. Yeah. Which means that if there is a hole somewhere in the body right. and I am not calling the, it wound. Yes. Uh, even if it's small, yeah. then the blood will start coming out of it That's and right. it can become right. a That's dangerous right. proposition. That's right. You captured it essentially. Right. This and is all. This is very yeah. important. So approximately 5% of the patients, for example, especially the elderly, etc., become prone to hemorrhages or leakage of blood, right. which can become a life-threatening problem. So which can again result into clots. Which could yeah. result in clots and also yeah. result in fall in blood pressure, etc., yes. and even loss of life. But the overall advantage of using a clot buster remains. Right. So the premium product, the premium quality you want in a clot buster is not only should it dissolve the clot, but it also should not lead to hemorrhage or decrease the probability of hemorrhage. This we were able to do it by doing the protein engineering of streptokinase. It's a protein. It's wonderful. Yeah. And this yeah. third generation became a world class product. We got patents and we licensed it to a US company to yeah. develop it first in India and then for abroad. And this product which is called clot specific streptokinase is very revolutionary. It will be very revolutionary because for two reasons. One, it will be a better product than streptokinase and it will be very similar to the premium product available in the world which yeah. is tissue plasminogen activator, but it will cost much less. And now it is at a stage of, it is been cleared by the drug uh, controller general of India. Uh, Phase 1 human clinical trials have been successfully cleared and it is on the threshold of phase 2 human clinical trials which are about to start very soon. So it is a very important milestone has been achieved in this world class product which is a clot specific streptokinase. We hope that within 1 or 2 years it will be in the market and it will be much cheaper than, than tissue plasminogen activator. Mm, whatever is available yeah, it will have at the, the moment. As the best that is available in the world it will hopefully compete with the best product in the world but at much reduced prices. So it will benefit potentially not only our society, but societies across the globe. That will be India's whole contribution. humanity. Absolutely. This, is, this will be a novel contribution of a new drug. And in, as a matter of fact, it is the first novel, the first 
biotherapeutic from India. Congratulations for contributing to the human knowledge as well as the technology part of but it. But the story does not end here. Yes. If you permit me, yes, we please. went on from this third generation to the first, fourth generation product also, which is currently at early stage. We licensed it out uh, two years ago in a landmark deal for several hundred millions of dollars because once you get a world class premium product, you can actually go to international companies and offer them at high prices while retaining the right to develop it as a topmost priority for the Indian masses. That product hopefully will prevent the very important and still continuing problem of reocclusion. Once a clot buster is given, clot is dissolved. In a significant minority of the patients, the clot reforms. And there is little pressures you can do at that time other, other than going for surgery. This clot buster, which we have licensed two years ago, will address the problem of reocclusion. So we have, in summary, four generations of clot busters, which, which, are, developed which are in the pipeline, the two, are in the, two are in the market, and two are in the pipeline at different stages. Which also answers my first question that we need to invest today in order to, in science and technology both, in order to reap the uh, benefits tomorrow. Because if we do not invest today, then the future is dark. We will not be even respected by the international community. Today, we are able to stand with the international community and international community has recognized your personal contribution to this area and your team's contribution to this area. Therefore, when our forefathers thought about CSIR and a chain of labs, they were looking at the India of today. After 60 years, we will be able to have people like you sitting there working, breaking your heads and the new generation being trained in the country. It has been very interesting uh, discussion with you, uh, time does not permit. Thank you very much for coming here, giving us so much of time. Thank you for watching Eureka. Next time, we will be again with you with extremely interesting personality who has contributed to science and technology within the country and abroad.